Praise the Lord. I welcome you all for this morning worship service. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for bringing your children to thy presence. We thank you, Lord, for the past night rest. We thank you, Lord, for all the bountiful blessings that we've been receiving from you day after day. Today we have come here in one accord to sit in your presence to worship you, praise you, adore you, and magnify your name. We pray and commit the rest of the time into your holy hand. Lead us and guide us with your spirit. Whatever we do, everything may bring glory and honor unto you. We pray for all the members those who are seated here. That would bless them and bless us all together. We pray this prayer, the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all begin the worship service by singing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
for our response reading this morning we have taken psalm number 34 for our response reading please turn with me to psalm number 34 of course it's displayed over here <clears throat> i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make its boast in the lord the humble shall hear of it and be glad o oh, magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed this poor man cried out and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles the angel of the lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them o oh, taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him o oh, fear the lord you his saints there is no want to those who fear him this young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the lord shall not lack any good thing come you children listen to me i will teach you the fear of the lord who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the eyes of the lord are in the righteous and his ears are open to their cry the face of the lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth the righteous cry out and the lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles the lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit many are afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all he guards all his bones not one of them is broken evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned let's all say together The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the As it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen let us all say the apostle creed together and affirm our faith I believe in God the Father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of god the father almighty from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now at this time I would request the MIF to come forward and lead us in time of praise and worship.
Thank you, all the YMIF members. Let us pray. Lord of Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We want to thank you, Lord, for our, this worship service in which we are able to gather together in our own respective places. We thank you, Lord, for all the dear members who are able to assemble together as family. Where there are two, three gathered in my name, I will be there. We could feel your presence even in our home. We thank you, Lord, for the life that we are enjoying. We thank you, Lord, for all the gifts, blessings that we are receiving from you each and every day. When we look around the world, there are so many people dying every day. There are so many people admitted in the hospital every day. There are so many people, those who are uh, caught up with fear, what will happen to me? How am I going to manage? And people are in despair. In all these things, we, the congregation members, those who are seated here, in no way we are greater than the people, those who are affected. We could understand your love upon us. We could understand how grace, gracious you are upon our life. We are gathered here with a grateful heart. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank you, Lord, for protecting each and every family members. We thank you, Lord, for the good health that we are enjoying. We thank you, Lord, for the good provision that we are able to get when thousands of people are not having one-time meal properly. When thousands of people are suffering, they are running back and forth to get little grain, little water. Lord Jesus, we are thankful to you, Lord. We are thankful to you, Lord Jesus. We are thankful to you. Even in our own congregation, so many members are not getting their full salary. So many members have lost their jobs. So many members are willing to work, but they are not given opportunity to work. They are not invited to work. They are not given them their due salary and wages. There are so many people who are deprived. We do not know how the days are going to be. Every day is a big question mark for most of the people. So Lord, we as congregation have gathered here only to pray for the situation to be ended very soon. We do not want to have this scene enduring. We are tired of facing this situation. We pray, O Lord, as we are sitting in your presence, help us, Lord, to pray earnestly for all the people, those who are under treatment, those who are getting treatment. We pray for all the doctors, nurses, all the health workers. We pray for the scientists and researchers who are involved in working on the new vaccine. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that would grant them your divine wisdom so that they will be able to invent very soon and give to people. We pray for all the national leaders as they guide the nation, as they work on various things to meet people's need. Give them the divine wisdom. We pray, O Lord, for the people, those who are in Assam. So many villages, so many districts have sunk and many have lost their houses, belongings, etc. We do not know how they are going to survive. We pray, O Lord, that would show your mercy, that would take care of them. We pray, O Lord, for all the servants of God who are working around the country, around the globe. Let them continue to give your people the hope. The Lord will listen to our cry. The Lord will hear our cry. And the Lord will bring an end to this scenario. We pray, O Lord, for all the missionaries who are in the interior parts of this nation. We do not know how they are surviving, but we pray, O Lord, that would take care of them. We pray for all the pastors, evangelists, 
our bishops, our district superintendents. Let them continue to take care of the congregation and give them the spiritual food and encourage them. And enable all the congregation to continue to ponder the word of God, go into the scripture and find out why, how, and what is the solution. The word of God teaches us the lesson and uh, you want us to return to you. You want us to confess our sins. If my people who are called by name would call me and confess their sin, I will heal the nation. Yes, Lord, we need that. We continue to pray for our Sunday school children. And we also pray for their education. Most of the children have started their online courses. We pray for the teachers. All the efforts that they are putting in would really benefit the children. We also pray for our youth and their Bible study. Let them also grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for our women. We pray for our men. We pray for all the congregation members. We pray for our senior citizens. Give them good health and strength. If anybody is sick, we pray, Lord, that would heal them and give them good, good health and strength. We commit Reverend Andrew Samuel and his family as they are planning to go to UTC Bangalore. We do not know when the door will open, but we pray the state would um, give them the way to enter into the state so that they can reach the college in the month of August and start their studies. We pray for the incoming pastor, Reverend Francis Bala, to the Tani Pastorate and the Dome Bibli Worship Center. Let him also come with a great vision and burden to nurture the people, to build the church, build the congregation, and be a blessing to the congregation. We pray for the Kalyan Madhuris Church, Kalyan English Church, we pray for all the committee members, the conference members that would continue to lead the leaders to lead the church towards the goal that is before us. We pray for the word of God that is going to come to us that would anoint your servant and bring the word to all of us. We thank you and praise you. We give you all glory and honor. We pray this prayer the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we... Listen to the word of God through Reverend Andrew Samuel. We will all sing together the hymn, I have found a friend in Jesus. I have found a friend in Jesus. After this hymn, our Reverend Andrew Samuel will be delivering his lost sermon uh, for both the congregations today. And let us be in the prayerful attitude. And today is observed as Parents' Day. And the sermon will be based on parents. And Reverend Andrew will be sharing the word of God. Oh, 
grief has taken and all my sorrows born. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my others torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. In sorrow he's my comfort. A very good morning to each and every one. I am glad to be a part of this service and to bring the word of God to you today. And as we are looking at Parents Sunday today, I feel it is important to also look at parenting from God's view. And uh, as we know, the scripture portion is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. It talks about unity and unity in the family. Two is better than one. And how if someone falls, the other one is there to pick them up, right? So we are going to begin with a few illustrations. There was a science teacher who was going to begin her lecture. She said, she thought to herself that I must talk to my students about magnets today. Magnets. And so she asked her children, students, we are going to learn about a very exciting object. It starts with the letter M and it picks up things. So one of the students got up immediately and said, I know what that object is. I know what it is. She said, what is it? The student says, mom. Mom picks me up every day. And also, when we talk about fathers, father is a man who carries photographs in his wallet where money used to be. And children also, you know, in today's world, they're growing up so fast and they're growing in a, such an advanced manner that they try to, they stop listening to their parents, they stop listening to the advice that they got from their parents. But as a person who has experienced this firsthand, I would like to say this, the advice we rejected from our parents, we are now giving to our own children. The advice that we reject from our parents, we are now giving to our own children. And the fifth commandment, says honor thy father and thy mother it is one of the top 10 laws and rules that god has given to each one of us as a believer and when parents begin to decline in help they need more help from us we are to honor them it is a commandment and a big deal to god that we should honor our parents and let me tell you how do we honor our parents how do we honor our parents we should honor our parents by accepting them. That is a very difficult word, accepting. Because Proverbs says, listen to your father who gave you your life and don't despise your mother and her experience when she is old. You know, many a times parents are not perfect. We are human. Parents are human. They are not perfect. But as a child, you are ordered or not, I should not say ordered, but you are uh, supposed to obey the parenthood that they carry with them as a couple. That is the thing, respecting the position as a parent, you as a child have to love them and honor them. I accept you in spite of your negativities, negatives and I honor you. Isn't that what they do with us also? Our parents accept us even though there are so many negatives within us. 
The second way that we can honor our parents is by appreciating them. And this I know that a lot of us as children or you know as teenagers have not done. We have not appreciated our parents enough. Appreciate the positives. You know, uh, it is like to these days it has become too expensive for children to appreciate. But do you know that it is also extremely expensive to raise a child? It's ex it is expensive to look after a child, to give all the facilities and give all the necessities to a child. I would give you an example from our own home. When my elder brother was small, my grandfather, uh, you know, they, I think they went to ask for some money for some toffee from my grandfather. So my grandfather said, okay, you can, uh, you know, wash out the car and you can give me a bill for washing the car. You can earn the money. And uh, they washed the car and they gave a bill for every part and they said, you know, this is the bill, 50 rupees. And that, uh, you know, struck in my mind suddenly saying that, uh, how, what if we put a bill or what if we put an amount for all the services that our parents provide to us? For example, if a mom, if a mother came and said to us, I have washed and ironed your clothes throughout your 10 years or 20 years, the bill is one lakh rupees. If the uh, father comes and says, I have been providing meals for you for your 20 years, the bill is 2 lakh rupees. If the mother comes and says, I have been your nurse, your doctor, I have been nourishing you back from your health, giving you personal touch and personal attention to you for your whole life, that would be another 2 lakh rupees. And the total bill, bill comes up to, I love you. That is the total bill that the parents accept. Any mother in this uh, congregation is easily, you know, uh, what should I say, capable of heading or controlling the air traffic. They are very meticulous, well planned, and they are extremely hard working. Let's appreciate the sacrifices that our parents make for us. Let's honor our father, honor our mothers, and you are to do it as the Bible says it should be done. It is very important to acknowledge the good that our parents do. Say, mom, that meal was amazing. Thank you. Say, dad, thank you for buying new clothes for me. I enjoyed it. I love it. Acknowledge because we are human beings and they are human beings too. And you will be surprised that you will get a lot more from your parents than you have ever expected if you come down to appreciating them for all the things that they do. Some people, it's very tragic that, you know, some people appreciate parents after they are gone. Some people appreciate their parents at their funeral and when it's too late. No degree of an expense at a funeral is equal to a thank you, a visit or even write a letter to your parents, a phone call while they are alive and you still have the opportunity. Also number four, honor your parents by never abandoning them. This is like a disease in India. Many, many parents are abandoned by their children. They are left in old age homes or they are left outside the homes. There are, we have heard many, many stories like this. You have to learn, me and you have to learn as young people to juggle the responsibilities as a parent and as a child to elderly parents. And this is heavily dependent on our character and it is very, very big to God. It means a lot to God, how we treat our parents and whether we are abandoning them or loving them and keeping them with us. We honor our parents by never abandoning them, by keeping them with us, by assisting them in practical ways. We offer support financially, 
we offer assistance in their old age. This is what is required by every child towards their parents. Whether your wife or your husband likes it or not, it is required of you and you should do it. And God will bless you and your family in amazing ways. And a word to the teenagers sitting in the congregation today watching. Honor your father and your mother. And when you are with your teenage friends and they you know, speak something about parents, you will say, I hate my parents. But try to understand that sometimes even your parents are troubled about you as to how you are growing up in life, as to what are the things that you are doing and whether are whether you are seeking God's divine purpose and blessings and way and guidance in your life. So therefore, we need to honor our parents always. We need to pray that God shows us the way. Now, when we come to the next point, we always see that teenagers as they grow up, children as they grow up, they want to become independent. They want to, uh, you know, do their own things. And uh, remember that when you, when your father calls you, where are you? It is 10 o'clock in the night. Where are you? It is 11 o'clock in the night. Never answer them by saying that I am big enough. I am not a child anymore. I can be out. You know what happens in the parents' minds? Parents' mind says that is exactly why I am asking you to come back home. Because it is 10 o'clock, it is 11 o'clock. You are not a child anymore. Parents are not stupid. Parents know everything. Parents know what's going on. Even if you think you are hiding it very cleverly. They know. And that is why they are very much concerned. Also, teenagers and children also have this, uh, you know, habit of uh, complaining that why do you keep saying these things again and again? But the parents can say, if you heard me the first time and did what I asked you to do, I would not have to say this again and again. It's a beautiful thing to just accept what the parents are saying and say, yes, mom, yes, dad. I understand what you're saying and I will try to walk as you ask me to. Therefore, it is important to understand that children have a duty to honor their parents. And let's come to the other side of the coin. Parents have a duty to be honorable. Parents must live a life that is worthy of honor. There are some children who even though the parents are honorable, never learn to honor their parents. They give, they hold back on the appreciation. They hold back on the understandingness towards their parents. Parents always remember the role model for your parenting is father God as the father. Your role model is always God the father. Always remember what kind of language you are using around your children. What is your behavior with your spouse near your children? How do you stand on the rules that you put for your children? How does God treat us? That is the way in which we must treat our children. Well, the Bible also says God is close to all who call on him for he hears them. God listens to us and we are to listen to our children. Many a times, how many times have uh, parents, uh, you know, not heard their children? How many times have the parents says, you know, one minute I'll be right back. Give me five minutes or give me an hour and we forgot that we had to listen to our children. Listen to the children. Listen to what they are saying. The Bible says that homes are built on a foundation of wisdom and understanding of one another. The proof we understand our children is that we are patient with them. As we come to the next point, we will understand 
that affection is a very important aspect of the parent and children equation. Parents, uh, be affectionate to your children. Children, be affectionate to your parents. Affection means to hug, to kiss and to console. Do you hug your children? Do your children hug you? Yeah. Are you able to kiss your children and tell them that you love them? Are the children able to kiss the parents and tell them that they love them? Do you speak well about your children? Do you speak well about your parents? Do you say, I am proud of you, my son. I am proud of you, my daughter. You are great. You are doing great. You are incredible and I appreciate you. Are the children able to say this to their parents? Listen with your eyes. Listen with your ears. Give them your attention, parents. And fourthly, God disciplines his children. Parents are required to be disciplinarians and to be always alert to discipline their children. That is the hallmark of a good parent. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. In other words, if you as a parent are not disciplining your child, the love is a question. You're wanting to be their buddy or their friend. You're wanting to be close to them. But if you do not discipline them, they will not know that discipline as a character is very important to be a godly person. And discipline will not be there in their character as they grow up to be parents. And your grandchildren will be the ones who will be without discipline. And let me tell you, it is a sign of love to be disciplined, to be, to give discipline. There are so many families out there who take care of their dogs, who take care, you know, where is the dog, where is the dog gone, where is the pet gone. But if you ask them, where is your child, don't know. Parent has to know where their child is. The child has to establish communication with the parent. And there has to be clear understanding as to what is safe and what is not safe. So it is our job as parents to be all into these points. If you refuse to discipline our children, it proves that we do not love them. Don't try to lay down any rules as a parent. You are not prepared to enforce. Don't put rules that you are not able to enforce on your children or you are not able to, uh, you know, not able to inculcate value in them regarding that rule. There are three things as parents that God sees that we should inculcate in our children. Number one, we have to give them life. Number two, we have to give them love. Number three, we have to give them laughter as a family. As a family, life, love and laughter is such an important part of our life. So many parents, you just need to relax at some point of time or the other with your children and provide them an atmosphere of joy, an atmosphere of enjoyment, love and you know, experiencing laughter, sharing a joke is very important. Be fair, be firm and be fun. These are also important points. Be fair, be firm and be fun. Be fair, be firm and be fun. I want each and every parent to remember this. It's going to be amazing if you can do that. There is one more important point that I would like to address. There are always unresolved resentments between parents and children or parents and parents in families. Unresolved resentment is that which destroys families more than anything else. We must learn to forgive, to give up anger and to give up the need for revenge. If you still have anger and a need for revenge, that means you have not forgiven. 
to show mercy and grace is so important that is one of the translations of forgiveness show mercy show forgiveness the book of romans puts it this way do your part to live in peace with everyone as much as possible children forgive your parents if they have fallen short parents forgive your children if they have fallen short we are all humans and receive forgiveness from god most importantly forgive yourself if you don't forgive your parents or your parents don't forgive you you break the bridge that you must pass to forgiveness with god god loves each of us because we are extremely extremely precious there are beautiful examples of forgiveness as in the prodigal son we know how he was lost into the world but he came back and you know without forgiveness he would never have been welcomed back to his father's home forgiveness is the key be graceful and merciful to your loved ones and when we talk about the scripture ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 it says two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor for if they fall one will lift up his companion but woe unto him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him up there's another scripture portion uh and uh, it's in the book of hebrews chapter 10 24 to 25 do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together for such is the manner of some but so much more you should assemble together as you see the day approaching the more you see evil and you see the coming of the lord see the troubles in the world and in the families please don't fail to assemble when you know that the end times are near do not fail to assemble in unity when you know that there are things to be sorted out do not fail to assemble when you know that there is resentment because you know the enemy satan loves to separate satan loves to create a cold atmosphere satan loves to keep people away from each other be cold to each other never come together but the book of hidu says something very different It says unite be together the more you see evil and you see the coming of the lord see the trouble in the world and in the families don't fail to assemble do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together isn't that very apt very very apt in this today's world families are not assembling forget assembling at your own homes not even assembling at church why assemble together be united in each other because when somebody in your family falls you are needed you are needed to lift each other up therefore <clears throat> the colder it gets the enemy says go separate ways if it gets cold let the cold kill you but god says be united god says i am not going to let you go we are better together say this to your families all those family members if you are feeling a sense of isolation or separation tell this to your family member i will never let you go because we are together and we are better when we are together we are better when we are united as the scripture portion says as god wills it to be so today parents and children today is an important lesson for us to learn it is important for us to be united no matter where the world is going and what is happening in the world assemble be united forgive have grace and mercy understand each other be faithful to each other at the same time never forget that a family is about enjoying each other 
each other's presence, enjoying each other's laughter, enjoying each other's testimonies or the stories or the experiences that they have in each and every moment of their lives. We are a family, we stand together and always have the grace and mercy to forgive each other as parents or as children. Dear members, this is the message that I wanted to give to us this today. As this is my last sermon as your pastor before I leave for my educational, uh, for the education purpose, I would like to thank each and every congregation member and the pastor committees of both the Vernon Memorial Methodist English Church, the Methodist English Church Thani and Dongavili Worship Center, the chairman, our senior pastor, Reverend Tennyson, Pastor Amma Rosie Tennyson, they're all the three children who are so wonderful, they are so hardworking, and they really give a support to their family's mission work, ministry. I'd like to thank my family, my parents, my brother and my sister-in-law. I thank them for their prayers, their support, their unending love towards me and my family. I thank my wife and my son for always being there with me, supporting me, lifting me up and being and trying their best always to be as a pillar of strength, a pillar of comfort to me. This is how God would imagine us always to be united in love, in forgiveness, grace and mercy because we are all human beings, we are all flawed but in Him we are complete and may the Lord add His blessings to these words. Amen. There is an announcement before uh, we hear Reverend Tennyson. On 28th of July, that is Tuesday at 8 p.m., the Methodist English Church Thane and Domovli Worship Center will have a pastorate committee. Please note this down that on 28th of July, 8 p.m., we will have a pastor committee for Methodist English Church Thane and Dombavili Worship Center. Thank you.
Thank you, Reverend Andrew Samuel, for the wonderful word that has come from your sermon. And at this time, we would like to thank you for being with us in the last three years, working with me, working with the congregation. And as you have planned to go for your higher education, the MTH studies in United Theological College, Bangalore, as congregation, as pastor, we together wish you all the best for you and your wife and your son, Ethan. This evening, the Vernon Memorial Madras English Church will be hosting the farewell meeting for Reverend Andrew Samuel. And I would request all the Kalyan Church members to um, join us in the Zoom meeting. The ID would be sent to you before 8 o'clock, so you can log in and participate and let us have a lovely time together. The Zoom meeting for um, the Vernon Memorial Methodist English Church and the Tana Pastorate will be conducted as usual. Thursdays for the MIF, Fridays for the elders and youth, the Bible study, on Saturdays for the Sunday school children, and on Sunday for the WCS. Please log in at the right time so that you all will be able to participate in your respective organizational meetings. The corona effect in Tane and Dombivili area is very severe and we feel sorry that the area has been badly affected. Many people are affected and some of our people also were affected but by God's grace they all were healed and they are back. And let us continue to pray to the Lord to put an end to this very soon. And as the corona effect is going on around the country and globe, the flood in Assam has devastated very badly. Many districts have been badly affected and many lives have gone. And uh, we need to pray for them and we need to help them in whatever the manner possible. Very soon, the Kurar, uh, the Community Outreach uh, uh, Department of our MCA will send their uh, circular and we can accordingly extend our help to support these people. The members, those who celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversaries are displayed here. You can read the names and on behalf of the congregation, the pastor, I greet them and I wish them may they have a wonderful birthday celebration and wedding anniversary celebration. In closing, let us all sing a beautiful hymn, it is a farewell hymn. Be not dismayed, whatever be. God will take care of you. As Reverend Andrew Samuel and um, Mrs. Angel Samuel are going to be away from us for some time. And uh, let us sing this beautiful farewell song. <laughs> Oh, Lord, the way he will.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for having enabled us to celebrate Parents' Day. We recall how our parents have played their key role in giving birth to us, raising us, molding us, shaping us, and putting us in the society as an acceptable person. All those who are seated here, we remember our mother and father, their good qualities, their hard work, their discipline, their spiritual life that has influenced us. Today we are standing here in the society because of their contribution in our lives. We look unto them and we want to say thank you, mommy and daddy. Some of us have lost our parents but with a grateful heart, we look unto them and we say, we thank you, mommy and daddy, for your life. And uh, as parents, we are seated here. Our children are watching us. And uh, pray to God that we will continue to be a role model to our children. Continue to be the person who would really influence them than the world. Today, many children are influenced by so many other people people. So many heroes and heroines have influenced them and many lives have changed and they have gone away. But we need to be very careful as Christian parents. We need to inculcate all the values that we have learnt from our parents and all the values that we have learnt from the scripture and from the life of Jesus that has to be transformed to our generation. We pray for all our children as they look into the parents as role model enable us to continue to show uh, the uh, exemplary life so that they would stand in the society one day and they will praise us. We thank you for Reverend Andrew Samuels, 
ministry, both in Kalyan and Thane Pastorate. We thank you, Lord, for his tireless service, running back and forth, meeting people, visiting people, preaching them, teaching them, and he has also picked up so many lessons from the congregation. We thank you for both of their life and their influence in the congregation. And we are here with a grateful heart to say thank you. And we would like to bid farewell to him as they go for their higher studies. May they have a wonderful time together in the coming two years and come equipped, well equipped, and come back and take up the leadership in the church and teach the people. We once again pray, pray for all the members, those who are seated here, all the friends and well-wishers, those who are continuously attending our worship service. We bless them, we pray for them. Whatever the needs that are there, Lord, you meet them. We pray and commit everyone into your holy hand. We especially pray for uh, the people, those who are in Azam, who have lost their lives, lost their uh, belongings, properties, and whatever the things that they got, they are on the road. We do not know how they are going to restart their life, but we pray, Lord, that would um, give them new direction, that would um, give them hope, and may the government continue to help them. We also pray the church would stand at this crisis hours with them and extend their help, enable our people also to stretch their hands to help these people. Not only in Azam, so many other places also the flood has affected and we pray for them. We also pray for all the people, those who are affected by coronavirus. We pray that this pandemic would come to an end very soon. We pray for all the pastors, the laity, the district superintendents, the bishop, and all the churches around the country that will continue to lead us and guide us. As we enter into this new month, may this month be a very blessed month for all of us. We pray and commit everything to your holy name. We pray this prayer in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may rest and abide with us all, both now and for evermore. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. May you all have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. God bless you.